I'm late. Breakfast meeting with Kathleen Turner. Felt it was a little impolite to leave while she was still eating. I've been there three and a half days. <laughs> My God, what an appetite. Have you ever watched a grown woman hoover up six gallons of beans? <laughs> she has to pause between courses for liposuction. <laughs> Unbelievable. So we're not representing her in Europe? But it's impossible to tell Helen, you see. Each time I popped the question, all she said was... <laughs> which I simply took as a no. <laughs> Tony, do you want a tea off this morning? Having a problem with Frankie Stark, you know, the hypnotist, remember, thrown in the slammer six months for drunken driving? He's due out any day now, and uh, word has it he's looking for a new agent. Tony, this could so easily have been avoided if you just visited him a few times. I visited him plenty, Dominic. I think he's just cranky because I took 10% of his prison wages. <laughs> he was making one pound 37 a week. I figured 13 pence was a fair cut. What the heck, I got him a job slopping out pig swill on the prison farm. I don't know. You slog your guts out for these guys, and do they ever appreciate it? He was never really eating management material. Yeah, you mean because he's a wild, sex-mad, drug-crazed, aggressive, drunken maniac? Absolutely no loss. Does gross half a mil a year, though. Get him back, Tony, get him back. <laughs> Helen, now, what, what, what's happening with your rabble? Well, one of my clients may be very close to a hit musical about Tiananmen Square. <laughs> Well, China, 1991, the attempted revolution. Well, surely you remember the students standing in front of the tank, barring its way into the square. Oh, Pumpkin, I stopped watching the news and reading the newspapers five years ago. It's just too awful. I'd rather not know. Well, how do you keep in touch with what's going on in the world? I read Hello every week. <laughs> but don't you think there are possibly even more vital planetary issues than where Richard Gere and Cindy Crawford went on holiday? Frankly, no. <laughs> yeah, Atin. Well, actually, I've got a seriously important announcement to make. What, finally managed to seduce your sister? <laughs> <laughs> For some time now, I've been trying to woo possibly the biggest band in pop music. The name doesn't matter. You guys won't have heard of them anyway. And to cut a long lunch short, they've asked me to be their new manager. Well done, my boy. Also, I've negotiated a signing-on fee up front of such seriously barf-inducing proportions that I can now start up my own agency. Excellent. I've approached most of your top clients, Dominic. Oh, excellent, excellent. And asked them to come with me. <laughs> they've nearly all said yes. And since all of your deals are just a handshake, no clients on a contract, so no one can stop them coming over to my new agency. Oh, <laughs> But you're leaving? Not only am I leaving, I'm taking all of your best clients. Also, I thought it only fair to show you certain rather intimate photographs and tapes that I've acquired over the years of all of you <laughs> in situations that I'm sure none of you are particularly proud. <laughs> this, I think, should prevent any thoughts of future reprisals. Ciao. Atin, dear, there was a call for you. I'll catch him later, babe. Some gentleman from... What's that supposed to be? Honestly, this writing's really dreadful. It's your writing. I know. <laughs> I always have trouble reading it back. It's my arthritis. Yeah. <laughs> Why you had to donate your brain to medical science before you died still mystifies us all. A gentleman called from the band. Last minute change of mind. They now want to stay with present manager. Hope it hasn't caused too much inconvenience. <laughs> oh, my God. Good news, is it? <laughs> and what could you have done about it? Absolutely nothing. OK, maybe I was a little over-flamboyant in the way I made the point, but nevertheless, in the present setup, anyone can come in and steal our clients, and there is nothing we can do about it. <laughs> Long-term contracts are the only solution. Obviously, these are fakes, but again, the point's valid. <laughs> anyone could bug us. It's time we accessed the 20th century, did a sweep of the entire office. Dominic. Have you quite finished? Are there any other points that you would like to make? No, nope, that's it. You, you, you don't want to set fire to all of us to prove that one of the fire extinguishers has fought it. <laughs> or perhaps nail my head to the table to demonstrate how sadly lacking the first aid boxes in really large plasters. <laughs> I nearly had a damned heart attack. And poor Joni clutching that package of so-called photographs. You know what you got up to in the 70s, for God's sake. 
If it had teased hair, a slash shirt, or tight jeans, Joni was on top of it faster than a starving hyena <laughs> on a plump young rabbit. I'm sorry, Dominic. I just felt something dramatic was needed to drive home the danger. We will talk about this later. <sighs> well, that, that, that's all for today. Oh, except to say that I had lunch with Tim Brown over at the BBC yesterday, and he made it pretty clear that poor old Brian Sharp is not going to have his contract renewed. But he's been going for years. He sort of took over from Roger Cook. I thought Brian Sharp Investigates was a big hit. Well, he's not the most easygoing of men, Tony. I think he's put a few executive conks out of joint. Meantime, I have the dubious task of telling him before he reads about it in the press. Mr. Beale, would you mind answering a few questions, sir? I'm Brian Sharp from BBC's Brian Sharp Investigates. Sorry, I'm very busy. Do you own this funeral parlour, sir? I'm not buying anything now. Sod off! Is it not true that in a Tory attempt to save money, you use the same coffin over and over again? Is it not true that you just pretend to bury people, whereas in actuality you keep the bodies in the backyard under a sheet of tarpaulin? You're just a bloody troublemaker, you are. Why don't you bury people, Mr. Beale? After all, that's what the public are paying you for. If you don't turn that hammer off, I'll bloody bury you. The public would also like to know, Mr. Beale, if there's any connection between you saving money by not burying people and your highly successful takeaway kebab shop. <laughs> there's no point in knocking out my cameraman, Mr. Beale, and stamping on his camera. That's going to achieve you absolutely. <laughs> Two hours later, I attempted to visit Mr. Beale at his house, only to find that he... Gloria, darling, once that's copied, can you send it over to the film and television awards in time for tomorrow? Yes, Dominic. Anyone wants me back at three? Holiday and birthday planner. Blue stickers birthdays, red stickers holidays. Dominic's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Look at this, he had 30, Brian Sharp investigates. Four months work, I don't even get a picture. Yet eight o'clock, wildlife and one, the flamingos get a two column full color photograph and it's a bloody repeat. <laughs> when was the last time a flamingo uncovered a timeshare scam in Eccles? <laughs> Never, that's when. Who's this? Looks like a right villain. Let's have a look. Oh, you're right. It's my agent. <laughs> What's he doing here? He's got the brains of an inebriated moose. Look, he's gone to the wrong man. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> I'm with Brian. <laughs> oh? Who? Oh, Brian. Brian Sharp investigates. I want to see Brian. You want to see someone called Brian? Look, I know that this is a stakeout. Don't worry, I'm his agent. Stakeout? <clears throat> Look, I'm, I know the score. I know you're after Mr. Constantinopoulos for selling short-circuiting Zimmer frames to the elderly. <laughs> Look, um, faxed across from the office. <laughs> this isn't a stakeout, mate. You must have the wrong van. Look, I'm fully conversant with the BBC security guard mentality. I know you chaps are all graduates of the University of Small-Minded Surly Bastards. <laughs> and you've clearly got a first with honours. But unless you drop this absurd charade and admit that this is a surveillance vehicle and that you are working undercover for the TV show Brian Shot. <laughs> What's he <you> doing? <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been most helpful. Dominic, get in. Brian, my dear fellow, how are you? What an impossible place to find. Why you can't have a clearly marked stakeout vehicle, I'll never know. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry to barge in while your man from Uncling, but, but we need to talk. Is there anywhere we can... There's a greasy spoon over the street. Don't want to get recognised. <laughs> Some real evil geezers out there. Oh. Chop your ghoulies off soon as look at you. This is bad news, isn't it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Take it Two teas, Fred. Wanna freshen up? Of course, a pretty face never damaged the ratings. I hear the Ulrika thingy is free. Go on, Sharp. 
No. I think you've got it. Mr. Constantinopolis said we should say hello. <laughs> We'll do your cameraman and your cowardly mate in the lavvy. As soon as I manage to unjam the lock, still I think they remember me. My God, it's a while since I did that kind of thing. <laughs> what? Punched in a enamel sink? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're feeling a bit groggy, old chum. Come on, let, let's uh, let's get you cleaned up, eh? And to add insult to injury, once the show's cancelled, I'm finished. Oh, no. Brian, what we need is some publicity. Turn heads. Like what? Well, I don't know, like win the Film and Television Award on Thursday. No chance of that. Well, you're nominated, aren't you? You are, aren't you? What are you saying? I think you know what I'm saying. You can rig it. Is that possible? Right, it happens all the time. Start writing your thank you speech. Perhaps you could even mention me. Something like he's a truly astonishing, absolutely gorgeous, darling, cuddly of a man. An obelisk of wisdom, generosity and wit. <laughs> no need to make a big performance out of it. <laughs> So, what have we got? A few things. As we all know, the list of judges is always kept a complete secret. Sorry it took so long. <laughs> There's no satisfying some people. Uh oh. <laughs> Five judges in all. I've managed to get the names of four. But there's enough familiar names there. We ought to be able to swing the outcome. Would somebody mind telling me what is going on? Because if you are somehow going to fix these awards, then I'm resigning. Helen, please, we're not trying to fix anything. We're merely going to help the judges realise that Brian Sharp's show is the best. But it's not. It's second-rate patronising garbage. Which is why we have to nobble the judges. No, 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 not nobble, Attie. No, not, 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 not nobble. Um, influence. Happens all the time in L.A., Helen. So subtly, you hardly know it. Take the judges out to lunch, a little wine, great food. You talk about your hopes for the outcome. And if that doesn't work? Hit them with the brochures on fast-drying concrete. <laughs> so, is that the idea? We each take a judge out to lunch because I have plans tomorrow I couldn't possibly cancel. Me too. Lunch with Phil Collins. Ah, I'm at the world premiere of the latest Michael Winner gore fest. Yeah, one of my clients gets strangled with his own entrails. Something I've wanted to see ever since I met him. No, I'm out. I've got a fringe theatre thing. Oh, Gloria, darling, could you possibly arrange lunch for me for tomorrow four times? Yes, four, alternating between Zeppos and Ricardos, 45 minutes each, starting at 12.30. Yes, thank you, bye-bye. Anything else? Happy birthday, Dominic. Oh, my dear boy, how kind. <laughs> it's an electronic message pad. You know, your memory for names isn't brilliant. Oh. And this, all you've got to do is um, punch in clients' details, yeah. wives' names, kids' birthdays, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then you just press that button, ah. up come all the details. <laughs> Pretty snappy, huh? Oh, it's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a couple of major deals cooking, so if you don't mind, I won't hang about while the others give you their presents. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dominic. <laughs> Hello. Hypnotist. Frankie Stark? No, no, not now, Edith. Uh, tell him uh, I'm in a meeting. In a meeting. No, 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 I don't want... That's right. Tell him I'm a... <laughs> Frankie! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, uh, great to see you. <laughs> Sensitive eyes. Six months stir I did for you. Me? What do you mean, Frankie? What did I do? You said you'd get me the best barrister in town. You said he'd get me off with a fine. Frankie, what could he do? You were drunk. You drove a car at 60 miles an hour through an indoor shopping mall. <laughs> Come on now. Even the Warren Commission couldn't get you off for that. Six months in prison when I was set to be a star. No one was a better hypnotist than me. Now that McKenna bloke's come along. Your fault, Tony. All your fault. 
Yeah, I was right. The creep is dumping us. Going over to UCM. <laughs> well, at least he didn't try to pull some kind of stunt. Like what? I had this crazy idea he might try to hypnotize me, you know? Oh. A last pathetic attempt to try to extract some kind of revenge. Yes. But I guess I was just a little too smart for him. <laughs> Whoa. I don't believe we've been introduced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Tony. I know. You know, you bear an uncanny resemblance to the actress, uh, what's her name? Sharon Stone. <laughs> but I bet lots of guys tell you that. A man on the tube said it once. But because he was drinking paint stripper, I didn't pay much attention. Say, have you ever considered a career in... Wait, wait, wait. Can you sing? Please, I beg you. Two lines, any song. Me? Humor me. Morning has broken like the first morning. Looks like Sharon Stone, sings like Whitney Houston. Yes! <laughs> International stardom, here we come! <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. Have you seen the new receptionist? What new receptionist? What the... The one that's practically naked. God, what kind of an outfit is that to wear to work? That would even be indecent in a honeymoon suite. Oh, God, here she comes. Oh, balloon, balloon, balloon. Ah, a millimeter shorter, that skirt would be a headband. <laughs> I may pass out with lust. Tony, I don't know what the matter is with you this morning, but I suggest you to take a cold shower, buy a pair of boxing gloves, and get back to work. Hey, Sharon, hold it one second. I'm uh, drawing up a contract. <laughs> Huh, seem to be trapped in some kind of invisible force field here. <laughs> a moving one. <laughs> What's happening here? Thank you, Pedro. So, Dominic, let's cut to the chase. What precisely do you want? Fraser, please. We're old cronies. And I merely thought that it's been absolute ages since we had a bit of nosh together, and that's ridiculous for a chumship as palsy as ours. And when, when, when was the last time that we had lunch? Fourteen years ago. Really? <laughs> that, that long? The last time you bought me lunch, Dominic, Little and Large were considered to be a double act of considerable promise. Oh. <laughs> but it seems like only yesterday. <laughs> so, tell me, um, how is, um, how is Wendy and the kids? Wendy? Wendy's your wife, isn't she? Dominic, I'm gay. <laughs> Fraser, my dear chap, is this a recent thing? Just since I was born. Well, you'll have to forgive me. I'm so sorry. I've been working rather, rather hard recently. And, uh, and, and how's Ben? He's fine. Uh, still living in Maida Vale, birthday May the 5th? Yes. Yes. And, of course, you're gay? Yes, I am. <laughs> I hear that uh, you're one of the judges for the film and television awards. Yes, I'm judging the best factual series. Of course. You want me to vote for Brian Sharp? Who? Do you really think I'd jeopardize a 20-year career in broadcasting to vote for that halfwit? Who the hell cares about corruption in the Mansfield sausage industry? Well, sausage eaters care. The public, people whose cats are still missing. <laughs> if you think I'd vote for Brian Sharp, you're insane. I'd rather spend an evening with Gary Bushel. Fraser, let me be frank, please, off the record. I heard that a certain frontman from a certain BBC Current Affairs programme is up for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Services to Broadcasting. That's always a secret until the night. How do you know? A client, no matter who. And they're going to give it to me? Probably. What do you mean, probably? Well, it's a two-horse race. It's between you and Selina Scott. <laughs> Selina Scott? Services to Broadcasting? Yes, hardly. Incredible, I know. Services to hair lacquer would have been yet at the mark. But anyway, the point is, this Brian Sharp is one of the judges. Really? Oh, yes. Well, as you know, Dominic, I've always been an enormous fan of his show. And if my vote's anything to go by, I'd say he's pretty well certain of picking up this year's award. <laughs> <laughs> A little crew? To celebrate? Uh, well, just a small glass. I've got rather a heavy afternoon ahead. <laughs> Gertie, my dear, how marvellous to see you after all this time. Oh, a glass of wine. What a lovely idea. <laughs> and it's between you and Selina Scott. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, I really must fly. Now, Faye, darling, remember one thing. 
lion slap. <laughs> <laughs> time for the award for best factual series and the nominations are world in action the big story and Brian sharp investigates and the winner is Brian sharp investigates what? Me? Bottles of champagne to tables 42, 63, 13, and number one. Compliments of Eden Management. Simply wonderful and truly, truly deserved. Well, it was. Well, of course it was. I won this fair and square. Well, perhaps with the tiniest molecule of help from your quite brilliant agent. Are you implying in some way that this was rigged? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Film and Television Awards would like to present this year's special Lifetime Achievement Award. This should be interesting. It goes to Selena Scott. <laughs> Mr. Eden, I'm Brian Sharp from BBC's Brian Sharp Investigates. <laughs> Is it not true that you've been responsible for fixing this year's film and television awards? Brian? <laughs> 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 